Wonder, page 31 to 40. The deal. Mum and Mr Tushman were talking when we got back to the office. Mrs Garcia was the first to see us come back and she started smiling a shiny smile as we walked in. So August, what did you think? Did you like what you saw? She asked. Yeah, I nodded, looking over at Mum. Jack, Julian and Charlotte were standing by the door, not sure where to go or if they were still needed. I wondered what else they'd been told about me before they'd met. Did you see the baby chick? Mum asked me. Mom asked me. As I shut my head, Julian said, Are you talking about the baby chicks in science? Those get donated to the farm at the end of every school year. Oh, said Mom, disappointed. But they hatch new ones every year in science, Julian added. So August will be able to see them again in the spring. Oh, good, said Mom, eyeing me. It was so cute, August. I wish we wouldn't. I wish you wouldn't talk to me like I was a baby in front of the other people. So, August, said Mr Tushman, did these guys show you around enough or do you want to see more? I realised I forgot to ask them to show you the gym. We did anyway, Mr Tushman, said Julian. Excellent, said Mr Tushman. And I told him about the school play and some of the electives, said Charlotte. Oh no, she said suddenly. We forgot to show him the art room. That's okay, said Mr Tushman. But we can show it to him now, Charlotte offered. Don't we have to pick Vire up soon, I said to Mum. That was our signal for my telling Mum if I really wanted to leave. Oh, you're right, said Mum, getting up. I could tell she was pretending to check the time on her watch. I'm sorry, everybody, I lost track of time. We have to pick up my daughter at her new school. She's taking an unofficial tour today. This part wasn't a lie, that Vera was checking her new school today. The part that was a lie was that we were picking her up at the school, which we weren't. She was coming home with Dad later. Where does she go to school? asked Mr Tushman, getting up. She's starting Faulkner High School this fall. Wow, that's not an easy school to get into. Good for her. Thank you, said Mum, nodding. It'll be a bit of a schlep though. The air train down to 86, then the Crosstown bus all the way to the east side. It takes an hour that way, but it's just a 15 minute drive. It'll be worth it. I know a couple of kids have got into Faulkner and love it, said Mr Tushman. We should really go, Mum, I said, tugging at her pocketbook. We said goodbye kind of quickly after that. I think Mr Tushman was a little surprised that we were leaving so suddenly. And then I wondered if he would blame Jack and Charlotte, even though, I really, even though it was really only Julian who made me feel kind of bad. Everyone was really nice. I made sure to tell Mr Tushman before we left. I look forward to having you as a student, said Mr Tushman, patting my back. Bye, I said to Jack, Charlotte and Julian, but I didn't look at them or look up at all until I left the building. Home. As soon as we walked at least half a block from the school, Mum said, So, how did it go? Did you like it? Not yet, Mum. When we get home, I said. The moment we got inside the house, I ran to my room and threw myself onto my bed. I could tell Mum didn't know what was up, and I guess I really didn't either. I felt very sad and a tiny bit happy at the exact same time. Kind of like that laughing, crying feeling all over again. My dog Daisy followed me into the room, jumped on the bed and started licking me all over my face. Who is a good girly? I said in my dad voice. Who is a good girly? Is everything okay, sweetness? Mum said. She wanted to sit down beside me, but Daisy was hogging the bed. Excuse me, Daisy, she sat down, nudging Daisy over. Were those kids not nice to you, Oggy? Oh no, I said only half lying. They were okay. But were they nice? Mr Tushman went out of his way to tell us what sweet kids they are. Uh -huh, I nodded, but I kept looking at Daisy, kissing her on the nose and rubbing her ear until her back leg did that little flea scratch shake. That boy Julian seemed especially nice, Mum said. Oh no, he was the least nice. I liked Jack, though. He was nice. I thought his name was Jack Will, but it's just Jack. Wait, maybe I'm getting them confused. Which one was the one with the dark hair that was pushed forward? Julian. And he wasn't nice? No, not nice. Oh, she thought about this for a second. Okay, so he's the kind of kid that's one way in front of grown-ups and another way in front of kids. Yeah, I guess. Ah, I hate those, she answered, nodding. He was like, so, August, what's the deal with your face? I said, looking at Daisy the whole time. Were you in a fire or something? Mum didn't say anything. When I looked up at her, I could tell she was completely shocked. He didn't say it in a mean way, I said quickly. He was just asking. Mum nodded. But I really liked Jack, I said. He was like, shut up, Julian. And Charlotte was like, you're so rude, Julian. Mum nodded again. She pressed her fingers on my forehead like she was pushing against a headache. I'm so sorry, Augie, she said quietly. Her cheeks were bright red. No, it's okay, Mum, really. You don't have to go to school if you don't want, sweetie. I want to, I said. Augie, really, Mum, I want to. And I wasn't lying. First day jitters. Okay, so I admit that the first day of school I was so nervous that my butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around my insides. Mum and Dad were probably a little nervous too, but they acted all excited for me, taking pictures of me and Vaya before we left the house since it was Vaya's first day at school too. Up until a few days before, we still weren't sure I would be going to school at all. 
After my tour of the school, mum and dad had reversed sides on whether I should go or not. Mum was now the one saying I shouldn't go, and dad was saying I should. Dad had told me how, re how, really proud, how he was really proud of how I'd handled myself with Julian, and that was turned into quite the strong man. And I heard him tell mum that, that he now thought she had been right all along. But mum, I could tell, wasn't so sure anymore. When dad told her that he and Vio were to walk me to school today, too, since it was on the way to the subway station, mum seemed relieved that we would all be going together. And I guess I was too. Even though Beecher Prep is just a few blocks from our house, I've only been on that block a couple of times before. In general, I try to avoid blocks where there are lots of kids roaming around. On our block, everybody knows me, and I know everybody. I know every brick and every tree trunk and every crack in the sidewalk. I know Mrs Grimaldi, the lady who's always sitting by a window, and the old guy who walks up and down the street whistling like a bird. I know the deli on the corner where Mom gets our bagels, and the waitress at the coffee shop, who all call me honey, and give me lollipops whenever they see me. I love my neighbourhood of North River Heights, which is why it was so strange to be walking down these blocks, feeling like it was all new to me suddenly. Armsford Avenue, a street I've been down a million times, looked totally different for some reason, full of people I'd never seen before, waiting for buses, pushing strollers. We crossed Ainsford and turned up Heights Place, via walked next to me like she usually does, and Mum and Dad were behind us. As soon as we turned the corner, we saw all the kids in front of the school and hundreds of them talking to each other in little groups, laughing or standing with their parents, who were talking with other parents. I kept my head way down. Everyone's just as nervous as you are, said Vire in my ear. Just remember that this is everyone's first day at school, OK? Mr Tushman was greeting students and parents in front of the school entrance. I have to admit, so far nothing bad had happened. I didn't catch anyone staring or even noticing me. Only once I did look up to see some girls looking my way and whispering with their hands cupped over their mouths, but they looked away when, we saw, when they saw me me notice them. We reached the front entrance. Okay, so this is it, big boy, said Dad, putting his hands on top of my shoulders. Have a great first day. I love you, said Vaya, giving me a big kiss and a hug. You too, I said. I love you, Augie, said Dad, hugging me. Bye. And then Mum hugged me, but I could tell she was about to cry, which would have totally embarrassed me, so I just gave her a fast, hard hug, turned and disappeared into the school. Blocks. I went straight up to room 301 on the third floor. Now I was glad I'd gone on my little tour because I knew exactly where to go. I didn't have to look up once. I noticed that some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing of pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on the chalkboard while all the kids started sitting at different desks. The desks were in a half circle facing the chalkboard. So I chose the desk in the middle towards the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough from under my bangs to see everyone's feet. As the desk started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times someone was about to sit next to me, then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Hey August, it was Charlotte giving me a little wave as she sat down at the desk at the front of the class. Why anyone would choose to sit way at the front of the class, I don't know. Hey, I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed Julian was sitting a few seats away from her, talking to some other kids. I know he saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly someone was sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will, Jack. What's up? He said, nodding at me. Hey, Jack, I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wish I hadn't done, because I felt kind of uncool. OK, kids, OK, everybody, settle down, said the teacher, now facing us. She had written her name, Miss Patoza, on the chalkboard. Everybody, find a seat, please. Come on, come in, she said to a couple of kids who just walked into the room. There's a seat there and right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now, the first thing I want everyone to do is stop talking, and she noticed me. Put your backpacks down and quiet down. She had only hesitated for a millionth of a second, but I could tell the moment she saw me. Like I said, I used to, I'm used to it by now. I'm going to take attendance and do the seating chart, she continued, sitting on the edge of her desk. Next to her were three neat rows of accordion folders. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you a folder with your name on it. It contains your class schedule and your combination lock, which you should not try to open until I tell you to. Your lock number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside this class but down the hall and before anyone even thinks of asking, no, you cannot switch lockers and you can't switch locks. Then if there's a time at the end of this, if there's time at the end of this period, we're all going to get to know each other a little better. Okay? Okay. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading the names out loud. Okay, so Julian Albans, she said, looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, here at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on a seating chart. She picked up the very first fold and held it out toward him. Come pick it up, she said, kind of no-nonsense. He got up and took it from her. Zemina Chin, she handed a folder to each kid as she read off their names. 
As she went down the list, I noticed that the seat next to me was the only one still empty, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, a big kid named Henry Joplin, who'd already looked like, who already looked like a teenager, said, she said, Henry, there's an empty desk right over there. Why don't you take that seat, OK? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk next to mine. Although I didn't, I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Henry did not want to move next to me, just by the way he dragged his backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he popped his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk, so it's kind of like a wall between his desk and mine. May a mark of it, said Miss Patoza was saying. Here, said a girl about four desks down from me. Miles Nury? Here, said the kid who had been sitting next to Henry Joplin. As he walked back to his desk, I saw him shoot Henry a poor you look. August Pullman, said Miss Patoza. Here, I said quietly, raising my hand a bit. Hi, August, she said, smiling at me very, at me very nicely when I went up to get my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into the back of my head for a few seconds. And everybody looked down when I walked back to my desk. I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it. She specifically told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyway, because I've used them on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock, but he couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated, kind of cursing underneath his breath. Miss Patoza called out the next few names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, OK, so everybody write your combinations down somewhere safe so that you won't forget it, OK? But if you do forget, which happens at least 3.2 times per semester, Miss Garcia has a list of all your combination numbers. Now, go ahead, take your locks out of your folders and spend a couple of minutes practicing how to open them. Though I know some of you went ahead and did that anyway. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meanwhile, I'll tell you guys a little something about myself. And then you guys can tell me a little bit about yourselves. And we'll um, get to know each other. Sound good? Good. She smiled at everyone, though I felt like she was smiling at me the most. It wasn't a shiny smile like Mrs Garcia's smile, but a normal smile, like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought teachers were going to look like. I guess I thought she looked like Miss Fowl from Jimmy Neutron, an old lady with a big bun on top of her head. But in fact, she looked exactly like Mon Mothma from Star Wars Episode 4. Haircut kind of like a boy's, and big white shirt kind of like a tunic. She turned round and started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock to open, and he was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one open. He got really annoyed when I was able to open mine on the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put, it, if he hadn't put the backpack between us, I most definitely would have offered to help him. 